Welcome everyone, today we will be talking about the concept of connections in the setting of differential geometry. Imagine you have a smooth manifold M, a curve gamma in M and a vector field V along gamma, meaning a vector tangent to the manifold at each point of the curve. I would like to study how the vector field is changing along the curve. To do that, I would like to compute the infinitesimal rate of change of V along gamma. What I would like to do is to take V of t plus h minus V of t and divide over h. This is how we take derivatives, right? Now there is a big problem with this. V at t plus h is a vector in the tangent space t gamma of t plus h m and V at t is a vector in t gamma of t m. These are two different vector spaces, so it doesn't make sense to take the difference between these two vectors. To properly do this, we need to connect these two vector spaces, and that is done with a connection. In a smooth manifold, a connection is a bilinear function with the node by Nadla that takes two vector fields and returns another vector field. For Nabla to be a connection, it needs to be C infinity of m linear on the first coordinate and it needs to satisfy the Leibniz property on the second coordinate. We should interpret Nabla xy as the derivative of the vector field y in the direction of x. Let's go to our end to see how our connection looks like. If we have two vector fields x and y, we can define Nabla xy to be the vector field whose components are the derivatives of the components of y in the direction of x. We can check that if x is replaced by fx, then f comes out, and if we replace y by fy, we can apply the standard Leibniz rule to each coordinate and get the Leibniz property for Nabla. The first thing we prove about connections in general is that the value of Nabla xy at a point p only depends on the value of x at p and the value of y along a flow line of x starting at p. This is consistent with the fact that it should be the derivative of y in the direction of x. To prove this, take local coordinates around p and write x and y in terms of these coordinates. Using the Leibniz rule, we see that the value of nabla xy at p is given by this formula. Then we can expand using this infinity linearity of x to get this other formula. In the first term, we have the derivatives of the components of y in the direction of x. They only depend on x at p and the value of y along a flow line of x. For the second term, we only have the components of x and y evaluated at p, so this proves the proposition. Because of this, it makes sense to write nabla xy at a point p, even if x is only defined at p and y is only defined near p. When we work in local coordinates, it is common to deal with the expression nabla partial i partial j. The Christoffel symbols are the components of this expression in local coordinates, so the Christoffel symbols gamma i j k is going to be the kth component of the derivative of partial j in the i-th direction. In general, the Christoffel symbols are smooth functions because partial i and partial j are smooth vector fields. Notice that in Rn, when we are using the standard coordinates, the Christoffel symbols are just zero because the coordinate vector fields have constant coefficients. Now we go back to the situation that we had at the beginning. If we have a curve gamma and a vector field along gamma, can we take the derivative of this vector field along gamma? This is what we call the covariant derivative. To define its domain, we need to specify when a vector field is smooth. To do that, we just take local coordinates and say that a vector field along gamma is smooth if its components are smooth functions of time. The covariant derivative is going to be a linear function from vector fields along gamma to vector fields along gamma that satisfies the Leibniz property and whenever we have a vector field on the manifold, the covariant derivative coincides with nabla in the direction of gamma. We will prove that the covariant derivative exists and that it is unique, in the sense that it only depends on the connection that we are using. To prove this, we work on local coordinates and write v in terms of the coordinate vector fields. By the Leibniz rule, it must satisfy this identity, and by the compatibility with the connection, it must satisfy this other identity. Notice that this last expression is already determined by the connection, so we can define the covariant derivative with this formula. I will ask you to check that this formula for the covariant derivative does not depend on the chart that we are using. 
meaning that if we are using another chart with coordinates y, j, then an analogous formula gives the same covariant derivative. Next we define the parallel transport. Given a curve gamma, we would like to move the tangent space at the initial point along gamma in a straight way. This is what parallel transport does. For a vector v0 in TPM, its parallel transport is a vector field with initial condition v0 and zero covariant derivative. We show that the parallel transport exists and is unique. In local coordinates, we can write gamma prime and v in terms of the coordinate vector fields. If we want v to have zero covariant derivative, we have this equation. By this infinity linearity of the connection, we can expand it to this other equation, and from here we can substitute the Christoffel symbols. Looking coordinate by coordinate, we get a system of n ordinary differential equations, so given the initial condition v0, there is a unique solution of this equation that is the parallel transport of v0 along gamma. Now this works if gamma is contained in a chart. But hey, gamma is compact, so we can cover it by finitely many charts, and we can define the parallel transport on each piece covered by a single chart. After finitely many steps, we get the full parallel transport of v0 along the entire curve gamma. So far, we have only given one example of connection, the connection on Rn where we differentiate component by component. Note that in this connection, if we take two vector fields and take the difference between nabla xy and nabla yx, we get this expression, which happens to be the Lie bracket between x and y. We will say that a connection is torsion-free if it satisfies this property. More specifically, the torsion of a connection is the measure of how much this equality fails. I will later make another video explaining the meaning of the torsion but for the purposes of Riemannian geometry, all we need to know is that for the standard connection in Rn, the torsion is zero. When a connection is torsion-free and we take local coordinates, the Christoffel symbols are symmetric in the lower indices, meaning that gamma ijk equals gamma jik for any i, j, and k. This is proven by recalling that the coordinate vector fields commute and using the definition of torsion. Now you may have noticed that so far, we haven't talked about Riemannian manifolds in this entire lesson. When we are working on a Riemannian manifold, we will want that our connection is compatible with our Riemannian metric. We say that a connection on a Riemannian manifold is compatible with the metric if the Leibniz property holds, meaning that for any three vector fields x, y, and z, the derivative of the inner product of y and z in the direction of x is g nabla x, y, z, plus g, y, nabla x, z. Now we are ready to introduce the fundamental theorem of Riemannian geometry. For any Riemannian manifold, there is a unique connection that is compatible with the metric and distortion-free. This connection is called the levi civita connection. Just like we did for the covariant derivative, we first proved uniqueness, and the proof of the uniqueness will give us a formula that proves existence. Working on charts, we will give a formula for the Christoffel symbols in terms of the Riemannian metric. We take three indices i, j, and l and take the derivative of g, j, l in the i-th direction. We first use the compatibility of the connection with the metric and then expand in terms of the Christoffel symbols. We can then pull the Christoffel symbols out of the inner product because it is bilinear. Then we do the same permuting the indices i, j, and l. Remember that because the connection is torsion-free, the Christoffel symbols are symmetric in the lower indices. Using this, when we add the first two equations and subtract the third one, we get a lot of cancellations. What we get in the end is just a single term involving the Christoffel symbols and the metric. Now we are going to use the inverse of the matrix of Gij's and denote it with super indices rather than subindices. We multiply the expression that we have by gkl, and then summing on the right we get a Kronecker delta. This Kronecker delta turns the m into a k and we obtain a formula for the Christoffel symbol ijk in terms of the metric coefficients and their derivatives. This shows that the Christoffel symbols of the levi civita connection can be recovered from the Riemannian metric. This proves the uniqueness and provides a formula for the existence. 
I'll leave it as an exercise for you to check that if we define the connection using this formula for the Christoffel symbols, it is both torsion free and compatible with the metric. If you do this correctly, it will end up being a simple calculation. And that's it for this lesson. We define what is a connection and learn what are the Christoffel symbols. We learn how to construct the covariant derivative and parallel transport along a curve using a connection, and we show that any Riemannian manifold has a unique connection that is both compatible with the metric and torsion free. In future lessons, we will use the Levi-Civite connection to obtain geometric information about Riemannian manifolds. Thank you for watching and see you next time.